Hey, can you guys hear me? Yeah, awesome. What's up, guys? You having a good con so far? All right, that's what I like to hear. My name is Dan Casey from Nerdist.com. I'm here to moderate today's fantastic panel. We have some great guests for you from Sons of Eric. Who's excited to see them? That is what I like to hear. Uh, I don't know about you guys. I love this show. I've been down since day one. I've never been on a motorcycle. I rode a Vespa one time, but this show, just watching it makes you feel like a badass. You feel like, I don't know, you feel like you put on a leather jacket. You just It, it makes you feel good. It's a great show. It made me realize I should never even think about wearing a vest, but more importantly, we're going to sit down with some of the stars of the show. But first, we have a clip to run, so enough of me yapping. There'll be plenty of that to come, so let's roll the clip. Hey, come on, man. I should be with you. I'll be all right. Best for most of us to stay detached. We get the fun stuff. Promise? <laughs> Armando's right. Mewling and dealing. Same goddamn thing. Not the plus plus. Not the same thing. Ladies and gentlemen, a big Calgary Expo welcome for Sons of Anarchy's Kim Coates and Mark Boone Jr. And the announcer neglected to mention this, but we also have Dre DiMatteo here, so let's give it up for her as well. Dre DiMatteo! Ah. Uh. Oh. Where are we? Aren't you, aren't uh, you Australia. from Australia? <laughs> that was last week. Oh, right, sorry. Hi, Calgary. How many of you from Saskatchewan? See? See? <laughs> it's about half of Saskatchewan. Don't about, fight right? it, Boone. Don't fight it. Yeah. Hey. We're everywhere. I know. I know. All right. So let's, uh, you know. Huh? Nice hair. Thank you. Thank you. I did it myself. Very nice. Uh, Remove so the man in green. <laughs> he's, he's really making me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Not a Flames fan? Not the place to admit no, that. No. no. <laughs> Poor Calgary no, no, Flames. No green men. <laughs> Yeah, I'm from Boston, so go that guy. Um, more importantly, let's talk about Sons of Anarchy. Guys, this last season, uh, I think Barn Burner is a bit of an understatement. Uh, you know, every season the status quo changes, but this season you guys blew it to smithereens. Uh, so what are, talk a little bit about this past season. What were some of your favorite moments, and where do we go from here? Drea? I haven't Jay. watched yet, guys. I haven't watched yet. That's oh, no spoilers. No spoilers. No, I have. Oh, yeah. No spoilers for me. I've only read my own scenes and my own words. I'm on season four. <laughs> Shh. A lot has happened, Drea. A lot has you happened. Missed Am I still alive? It? No. I'm not sure. <laughs> they, they've frozen your body. Fuck. <laughs> That's never stopped, Tig. <laughs> Fuck. Did I just say that? <laughs> well, let's talk about that a little bit. I mean, Tig has been in a very interesting headspace this season. Uh, he's been sort of all over the place, but seeing him sort of getting back into the fold, readjusting to all the changes there in the club's lineup. So, you know, talk about that. Talk about sort of getting into that headspace and how you embrace the role this season. No. All right. Um. <laughs> no, listen, the, the thing about Sons of Anarchy, which you guys all know because you're all... Uh, rabid, beautiful fans, is that you never know what Sutter's going to come up with next. And I, I think we've seen the club uh, shift so dramatically when Perlman stopped being the president, Charlie took over, um, you know, Boone has always been this voice of, of, of reason uh, in the background and in the forefront. Teague has been lost and crazy and he's uh, stayed loyal throughout the whole thing and I think it should be dead about five times now. So uh, every day for me is a, is a good day on set, and I, and I really do love these guys. And I, we're in our final season, so get ready. It's going to be a tinderbox, I really think. Yeah, I mean, there's been so many explosions, literally and figuratively, this season that I, I for one, don't know where we're going uh, this next season. What, do, where do, where, what should we expect? What would you like to see happen? 
we really don't know and we have absolutely no control over it so there is no reason even to project mm -hmm. so we just live in abject terror every yeah, time we, Kurt Sutter comes yeah, up the, to you the, the, the script comes and you're like oh Jesus Christ <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to open it and I'm not gonna open it how could you read it for me please I mean like that that's some of the best acting boons ever done <laughs> that, 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 that's some of the best acting boons ever been allowed to do Oh, not true. <laughs> um, so, like you know, like you said, sometimes you're terrified to open the script, and for good reason. Because we're not, no, we're, we're kind of fucking with you. Basically, Kurt side of the great Kevin. Could you please keep this where we're these children here? I'm know, sorry. Please. Basically, we're fooling with you. Eh? Um, I we really are. Yeah. We don't. We so we're kind of kidding. No, we don't. The great thing about Sutter is he does let all the leads know before the season starts if you're going to last the season or not. So uh, from Ryan Hurst to, to, to Tara to Pearl to all, the, they're told before the season starts. So you don't know when it's going to happen or, or necessarily how. But now it doesn't matter because this is the last season, right? So it just doesn't matter. Sutter's not called any of us and that's okay because it's the last season. <laughs> Um, you mentioned you know, there's a lot of there's been a lot of goodbyes this season. What was it like saying goodbye to some people you've been with for so many years, like Ron Perlman, Maggie Siff, Ryan Hurst? M Maggie has just had a baby, so I think that's give it up for Maggie, yeah. beautiful, beautiful baby, beautiful baby. Beautiful girl. So I mean, and I'm gonna she miss working with Maggie because she's the one who I work with the most. So I'm I'm not gonna dig not working. Yeah, with how her. great was some of those scenes with Dre and Maggie, right? I mean. Yeah. Really? Perlman. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, as far as Bobby was concerned, Perlman should have gone like, you know, three seasons ago at least. So, you know, that was kind of an inevitable thing. It's sad when, you know, when people are gone, it's, it's you know, Opie was really hard. Really hard. Maggie is, it's, that's going to be a sad thing that she's not around definitely yeah uh, and, and sorry but and to add to that I mean we we haven't started filming yet season seven not till the end of May so uh, you know Maggie was right there till the very literally last night of filming that last episode with her Charlie and Rockman and, and Theo and Katie so it's we just assume Maggie's gonna be there come end of May right. but she's not so it is going to be a different vibe, and we're really thrilled that this one here is coming back big time this year, Drea. So, thanks, Bryce. And that was uh, that was one of the things I was most excited about, um, Drea. When they told you you're going to be coming back, did you imagine it was going to be in such a big, meaningful, impactful manner? Um, I, I mean, I've been on and off the show the, the whole the whole time, so. I, uh, yeah, I wasn't surprised in the end when I knew Maggie was going that I wasn't that surprised about it. But um, I'm excited about it. I'm happy to be there. I, it's my first time committing to anything in a long time. <laughs> well, uh, did, sorry. No, I'm no. going to take over. Yeah. <laughs> so, did Sutter tell you anything about this year? I know a little bit. And he kind of told me about it last year before the last season even started. So I, I know a little bit of something about something. Don't, don't put her on the spot, Kim. I'm going to okay. fucking tell everybody right now what's going on. <laughs> I don't even know what's happened since season four. He was telling me these things, and I was like, what are you even talking about? What show are you talking about? <laughs> so. Yeah. Do you uh, know things? No. No, no con exclusives for us? No, I don't. I'll step out in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, another another thing this uh, this year with Wendy is we saw her unfortunately lapse back into some of her drug use. Um, so I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that, getting back into that space, and um, you know what what that what that means for the character. She did. No. Fuck. Am I crazy? Oh, uh, oh, he. But that was, when did he shoot me up? That was last season. That wasn't even this season. That was okay. Season sorry, my brain I'm is. Really, uh, my I'm time zone sure behind. I have not watched anything. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I, got, I started doing drugs again. Um, and, and, what's and, that like uh, as an actor to have to go back into that headspace yeah. of being a junkie? Because that's what I used to be before I started acting. Um, let's see. 
Play, this is so not a genre. Playing, 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 really. playing, um, pl playing that kind of character is, is my favorite. I, playing a straight Wendy is it's fun, it's nice, it's easy, but playing the other stuff is, is a lot more fun. And it's probably where, I, where I'm the best at uh, being a mess. So. Well, on a bit of a lighter note, uh, when can we expect to see the return of Elvis? I, you know, I've put in a few requests, but what can you say? <laughs> you want to do it? Go, go ahead, man. <laughs> oh, 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 hey. Okay, you happy? I, I just want to say that we, uh, Boone, uh, Theo Rossi, and myself did an Australian tour. Uh, it was packed, it was crazy, and Boone sang every night, and that was a show stopper. Wow. It was awesome. He sang a song every night. So. I, I can't sing a cappella. That's how I got the job. I don't know how, but that, you know. So, somebody got a guitar? We could, oh, too bad. <laughs> Uh, another thing that I was excited about this season was the addition of Peter Weller, seeing him, uh, you know, have a larger role, and also see him step behind the camera. So, talk a little bit about what it was like to be directed by RoboCop himself. No. All right. He, Peter is. Do this. Do that. Oh, could, could maybe you could do this. Maybe. I, 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 and and he he's, does everything. He's got so much energy. He, that guy. It, it, you just can't believe it. It's like every time Weller, and he does direct three. Uh, a year now, which is pretty huge. That's the most any director directs is three. So obviously he's doing something right, but his energy is off the charts. He, he literally does all the parts. <laughs> he's my favorite. And it looks like we have some people in the audience who have a couple questions. So let's kick it over to Lang. Lang, where are you? There you are. What's up, Lang? Hi, how's it going? Good, eh? <laughs> My question is for all three of you. With the series coming to an end, would you rather see your characters survive or die in a bloody blaze of glory? Yes. I, I guess I'll just have to make love to myself if I die. I don't know. I, I don't know what's happening. I always end up dead. <laughs> we oh. died. To, wait, did we die together in Assault on Precinct 13? <laughs> yes, we did. See, oh, no, uh, I survived. Uh, I'll see. My, Dan, Dan, where are you? Great name, by the way. Dan, what's up? What's your uh, question? My question is for Drea. I just want to know what was like working on one of the most underrated television shows of all time, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say Sopranos. <laughs> I thought you were being a smartass. Um, actually, Joey, um, but look, back then I, I felt like I had committed suicide, and today I would give my left fucking leg to, to do that again, because we actually had 15 million viewers every week, and that was considered low. So I'd go back and do that any time now that I'm almost 50. But uh, it was actually a good time, even though I hated being there at the time. It was a great time looking back on it because I love Matt LeBlanc. So, but yeah, it was it was really fun to get bashed on fucking Joey. <laughs> so, what are the chances of getting him as a guest star on season seven? <laughs> no, no. All right, Justin, protector of Gotham City, what's your question, man? Hi, I was just wondering if you guys, um, if any of you had any motorcycle experience before, and if any of you guys get to keep your bikes when the show's done. Uh, uh, I got a, a bike when I was 11 years old, so I rode that for a, quite a while. I, I mean, I rode when I was young for quite a while. Then I stopped, and, you know, then it's, I bought a bike the day the show was picked up. And I'm, you know, I ride every day. Boone and I are the only two regulars who rode our whole lives before the show started. So it was a freaking mess. It was, it was guys trying to learn. And these are Harleys. These are not like, you know, 125 Suzuki. So it, it's, uh, I, my, my nickname on set is Safety First. 
because we had a bunch of little gnats running around, dropping their bikes, and what the hell? So it's obviously gotten a lot better now. We all ride now. But it, season one and season two were absolutely frightening to watch what these guys were doing. Yeah. Is there footage of those early uh, training Abs sessions? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Some Can we expect that in like the full, season, the full series uh, box set? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. think so. Personal use only, gotcha. Um, you know, this, uh, this season has had a lot of great guest stars. This whole season, uh, this whole series had a lot of great guest stars. Personally, I was really stoked to see Walton Goggins return as Venus Van Damme. Um, looking back over the course, yeah. <laughs> so I think you need a little more uh, depth there. <laughs> yeah, Kim, you know I have a set of those at home. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me before? I found them in the, in the garbage can. Oh. So you can come over any time. Yeah. All right. Thanks, bud. Uh, yeah, I know Walton, when I found out that he was going to do what he was going to do, um, it was time for him to come and get all his prosthetics, his breasts made and shave and all that stuff. And I said to him, if I see you on set, I'm going to punch you right in the face. I don't want to see Venus until I see Venus. And that day, Boone was there. All of us were there in that room with that guy and the ball in his mouth and I hope there's whatever and Walton walked in and I swear there was no acting required that was him that was her right there and I'm telling you what that was some of the fun shit I've ever done with him that was great fun stuff I've also read about that scene in particular that not only was it 110 degrees but uh it, there was a lot of improv going on and I was curious in general you guys have such a loose camaraderie on the show and an easygoing nature about the dialogue even when it's heavy stuff uh, is there a lot of improv on set is, it, is that something that's encouraged no no oh. it actually was hundred and thirty degrees in that room not even kidding and 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 he was in rubber in a cat suit. And literally there was a stream of sweat coming out of very strange places. <laughs> very strange places. Like a places. stream, like a hose. Like a hose, it was. It was like a, yeah, like the, the faucet thing. was on. But, yeah, there was a lot of improvisation that day. Gotcha. Well, with that delightful image in mind, Steve, what's your question? Uh, my, my question's for Kim. Uh, what made you decide to do Goon, and will you be doing more comedies in the future? Well, as you guys know, I'm Canadian, proud. Proud. No, and, and ho hockey's, hockey's been my sport my whole life, and I, I played my whole life, and I was way too old to, to be a player, so they asked me to be the coach, and when I read the script, it was hysterical. And uh, we're doing another one. We're doing Goon 2. So get, get ready for that. And we shot that whole thing in Portage La Prairie in Winnipeg. And Le yeah, Liev Schreiber and Jay Baruchel and Sean William Scott. We, we just had and all those guys. It was such great hockey players. And uh, it, it was a phenomenal treat for me. And that we did improv. I mean, Michael Dow's famous, beautiful Canadian talented director just let me and everyone go. Just go. So it, it, was, it was some fun, and I can't wait to do the next one. Awesome. Any, uh, any ETN when we can expect that in theaters? No, the script's right. still being uh, ri written, so we don't know yet. Great, great. All right, Lisa. Lisa, where are you? There you are. What's your question, Lisa? Is Practical Joker on set? Is that Lisa West up there? Yes, it is. <laughs> is that my Lisa West up there in the... Twitter, Twitter. Oh, yes. Um, I'm totally nervous. The, are the, the, did you ask, is there a practical joker on set? Yes. The reason, mm -hmm. the reason the that we don't really get a chance to improvise that, you know, on the set, and why maybe there's not that much practical joking is, we shoot this, these things really under pressure. We shoot an episode in seven days. <laughs> And there isn't really that much time for anything except trying to get it done. So, and, and, and you've seen the stuff that we're all doing. It, this is flat out drama at the highest freaking level. 
So there really is not time to fart around, unfortunately. Yeah. All right. Uh, Leanne, do you have a question? Uh-oh. Hi, this is for Drea. I was wondering with your character, Wendy, do you think it would be final justice to kill Gemma in the end? <laughs> she said that with authority, too. Hmm. I don't know yet. I don't know what I want to do to anybody. Once I start watching after season four, I'm going to figure out exactly what I want to do, and I'm just going to say, fuck it, and do it, and improvise. <laughs> But that, right. that might, people might um, like that. Gemma should go. I don't, I don't know. It would certainly be an epic battle for sure. Long time coming. Uh, Nikki, where are you? There you are. What's your question? Hi, my question is for Kim. Um, first off, I love doing Goon. I love that movie. But my question is for uh, Tig. Why was Tig afraid of dolls? Isn't everybody? <laughs> Drea goes, is Tig afraid of dogs? Of dogs? <laughs> you didn't know? I want to know. That's actually a phobia of Kurt Sutter. Uh, Kurt Sutter told me after the first season, because I, I didn't know where it came from, so I wanted to kind of know. And he said, it's me. It's him. I guess these porcelain little dolls when he was a kid scared the crap out of him. So he just gave that phobia to Tig. So I have a lot of fun with that. Dolls? Dolls, yeah. Oh, dolls. I thought it was dogs. <laughs> dolls. See how, see how I know what's going on. Dolls. I mean, dolls can be pretty terrifying as well, especially if they're in a dark basement. But Leah, what's your question? First off, I want to say I love you all. Sons of is my favorite show. Drea, Pray for Rock and Roll is like my favorite movie. But, um, Thank you. It's actually for Tig, my question. Um, you're pretty messed up on the show, hey? I just, I want to know where that, you can channel that from. Like, it's, it's pretty messed up. I, I don't know. Saskatoon. <laughs> Saskatoon. <laughs> now, we, we, we've all uh, up here uh, had opportunities on the show to, to show creative messed upness in the show. And uh, I, I've been lucky to be with, with these guys and the rest of my castmates because some of the stuff I get to do with them has been stuff I'll, I'll never forget. And, and even though we're coming down to an end, as you guys know, uh, it, it's, it's going to be sad when it's over. But the library that you guys are, and us will all have when it's over, I mean, Dre and the Sopranos, I mean, come on. I mean, right? It just doesn't get any better than that. And I think Sons will be one of those shows that people will love to have and pull out on a Saturday night at midnight and watch the third season again. You know what I mean? I, and so I'm really proud that we have such great fans that we can do crazy, crazy stuff that people will not forget. And just uh, building off her question, um, I would argue that everyone on the show is a little bit messed up in their own way. Uh, but going into season seven, who do you think is the most dangerous character? Who do we need to watch out for most? Chucky. <laughs> Definitely Chucky. Well, you know, I mean, I was going to take exception with what Kim said because, in fact, Bobby really has not demonstrated any really messed up tendencies. So I'm kind of hoping, you know, <laughs> because those are the things that you get to do that are, you know, truly unforgettable. So is season seven going to be Bobby's time to go off the rails? I, I really would hope that he, you know, doesn't quite just, yeah. Yeah. Only time will it's tell. about time. Yeah. yeah. We've been waiting for it. We've been waiting. Yes, I, I'd say yes. Yeah. Well, I, I do have to remind him of, of about a few things which you don't have enough time for, but the Tom Arnold sequence when this guy lost his crap um, over what Arnold, uh, Arnold's character was doing, trying to hold him back. It took, it took, it, we're still trying to hold him back. Do you remember that day? Yeah, but uh, I mean, okay. All right. It's not. I'm it's, losing a battle here. It doesn't matter. Yeah, well. 
Excuse All me. right, Penny. Penny, where are you? There you are. What's your question, Penny? I wanted to say I came all the way from Sudbury, Ontario to see you guys. And I just wanted to know, what was your favorite scene to shoot in any season? What was your favorite scene to shoot in any season? <laughs> uh, I mean, all the girls like when they get a chance to kiss Charlie. Ooh. See him take his shirt off, you know, that sort of thing. So that would be season one for me, because he hasn't come near me since. <laughs> uh, for me, uh, even though it was so much pain, it, it would be my daughter, the losing of my daughter. I mean, that was a very uh, harrowing time for me as an actor, but I'll never forget it. So uh, that was pretty, some harrowing. Yeah. Boone? <laughs> How about the scene where I, uh, where I come next to you on the motorcycle? We have that two seconds together. <laughs> yeah, that was great. That was, that was a good one. Two seconds. We did. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I show up for work every day. I don't know. Pretty much the same, ready to go. I, I mean, that's really what it's about. So it's, I, I, I mean, I can't think of a really standout scene. I, I thought the scene where Char, actually in this last step, last uh, season when Charlie is heading off, that was, a, that was a good scene to shoot. Remember that one on the sidewalk and all that? Yeah. Very in. That was good. Well, what was your favorite scene, Penny? <laughs> all of them. Good answer. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, the Khaleesi, you have a question as well. This is incredible. The Mother of Dragons is here. Hi. 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 <laughs> wow. Um, hi. <laughs> I, this, is qu this question is for Kim. Hi. Does Tig survive the next season? Well, I don't know. Uh, no, it, 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 I, I don't know, honey. I, I think the Tig should have been gone five or six times by now, so why kill him now? I mean, what's the point? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. You better not be watching this show, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> There's a TV edit for kids. It's about 15 minutes long. <laughs> Uh, yes, the Man of Steel up there. Uh, Tyson, is that you? What's your question, Tyson? You get uh, any hate mail or uh, love mail from like actual bike gangs or anything like that? It's to all of you. <laughs> See, I, I think that the, the show has, a, you know, sort of romanticized the bike club in a way even though it's a horror you know it, I mean everybody does know that it's a TV show so I, I you know I think maybe bike clubs had a problem with it in the beginning and I think maybe they have my what I've heard is that you know they've kind of grown to like it it mythologizes their world in a way that you know people relate to it look I mean you all you know really dig the show, I guess. That's why you're here, so. But I don't know that bike clubs had a really great reputation. You know? And I, I, I'm just going to add to that, that, you know, I don't know how I know this, but um, I've been told by certain members of the One Percenters that our show's nothing like their, their life. I mean, they have right. much more fun. They, they, don't, they don't kill 22 people a week and, 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 get, know, away and, and get away with it. So it's, it's a frickin' TV show, you know? But, uh, yeah, they've... Yeah. All right, Ryan, what's your question, man? Hey, how's it going, guys? 
Uh, Sutter's such a huge force for this, you know, writer, director, but also as well an actor. And I know some of you guys have had some experiences, I know Boone has for sure, in terms of acting with him on set. How are your experiences in terms of acting with a guy who says, has such a strong direction for this show? Um, Kurt and I, yeah, we had a, a, I think we did two, maybe three scenes together. Kurt really, you know, he, as Otto, if you could recognize that that was Kurt at all, you know, he, I mean, his eye is, he, I, I mean, he came as an actor. He, he, I don't think he ever, he, maybe he directed himself a couple of times, but I don't think with me. Um, so, the, you, know, you know, he just came as an actor every, when he came to act, and, and they were, I thought they were pretty good scenes. Um, he, you know, he played a horrific person. <laughs> so, you know, that again is pretty fun to do. So, he, just, he's, he, he certainly brought a strong character as an actor. It, it, it kind of fit the rest of the way he's constructed the show. I think it's, it's, it's that Otto is kind of the clearest example of what is at the heart of this show in some way. Awesome. Thanks, guys. And uh, Derek, up there on the right, what's your question, man? Yep. Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, Mark, my question's for you. Uh, I can't believe none of my fellow superhero lovers have pointed out Mark played uh, Detective Flass in Batman Begins. Can we hear it for him? Uh, so, Mark, I just I wanted to know if you had any like uh, really cool stories from the set of uh, Batman Begins. Well, um, yeah, there a lot of great stuff. I mean, but. Maybe the most horrifying was when Batman's um, stunt guy fell. Like we were, we were, we shot in a um, blimp factory in 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 England, and Gotham was construct. A lot of Gotham was constructed in there, and it's really a, the biggest building in England, and <laughs> and um, so he was flying around. Uh, doing some stuff and he got caught up and he fell 65 feet and hit the ground and got up like what the, you know, big deal <laughs> tough tough, tough dude so I mean, Batman stunt double right there yeah <laughs> yeah got up and like an hour and a half later was doing this shit again. Wow. I feel like that's almost a prerequisite for being Batman stunt double. You have to be able to take that kind of fall and just shrug 65 it off. 65 feet. I, it yeah. was terrifying. I mean, I saw it out of the corner of my eye. It was really terrifying. Wow. Well, thank goodness he was okay. Superhero indeed. Yeah. Uh, Miles, what's your question, man? Hey. So my question is, uh, when you guys have those falls on the bikes in the show, are you guys using stunt doubles? Is it all set up? Absolutely not. I do every single one of those myself. <laughs> <laughs> of course we have stunt doubles. What? What's wrong with you? <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. So, no, there was one time when Tig's character uh, uh, wipes out because of Bobby's stupid old bike, and I went down that 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 it, down the hill. Um, my toughest part of it for me was when my st stunt double did the roll and the jump and the fall, and then he landed and we gave him a standing ovation. Then he got up and I just laid there and went, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. So yes, we have stunt doubles. Yeah. Well, that is a relief to hear. Um, I think we have time for one or two more questions. Uh, Sage, what's your question? Hi guys, um, so the biggest question I have is what is the most defining episode for each of your characters? There's so many, right? 
I mean, there's so many. I'm, I mean, defining what do you? What, I, 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 I don't. Because, because like in a television show, you go, you know, every. That's the thing. It's episodic. You, it changes. Like for Hopefully. example, the Wendy character as where you really see who she is and how she can help everyone move forward. Kind of the biggest push for that character. I, I mean, I don't know which episode it was because, you know, I'm not caught up on anything and I only read my parts. But um, I will say that I, whatever scenes that I guess where she had the biggest push and pull with her conscience about whether to help Tara and whether or not it was the right thing to do and you know, whose side she should be on to get her children back, but at the same time being morally cool, because I don't think she's, um, I don't think she's like the rest of these boys and the rest of this crew at, at this point. Um, T Tara's dead. Oh, right. <laughs> Did I kill her? Sort of. Okay, <laughs> shit. Um, But that's Wendy's, that's, that's going to be Wendy's journey, is I think struggling with her conscience and how to go about doing the right thing for her children. Yeah. Yep. Is Tara still dead? <laughs> she may yeah. come back in yeah. season seven, but no spoilers. I'm going to miss her. Locker. I'm going to miss acting with her. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I, I just want to say that when you do a show like this, this is my first foray in, into a regular television series, you just don't know what's going to happen. So even though your character has spikes and we're all leads on the show and ups and downs and film a lot, film too little, whatever it is, you, you, you will leave your mark on that show. And I think this show has been so dynamic in so many ways for so many of us that there isn't one moment that you can say that, you know? I think that, that the ones that uh, are dead now and the ones that keep going, the finality will be this season. And uh, it's too hard to answer that question because there's been so many ups and downs in such a great written show, you know? Awesome. Thanks, guys. And I just have one last question for you guys before uh, we take off. What is Harley Davidson going to do without you when the show ends? Boone, Boone, you take that. No, no, no I'm not going to. I've already got myself in a lot of hot water about that. <laughs> so, no, that, that was... What, Kim, you tell me that, that there's a video of there me is. actually saying that yeah. thing. I, about, they're, no. doing, they're doing better anyway. <laughs> they've really upped their game, actually, lately. They've, they've, they're really coming out with some new stuff, and their bikes look good. And they, they do work, I mean, I, really well. I'm, I'm not doing a, a Carly commercial, <laughs> but, I, you know, I just took like a 600-mile trip, and I was truly amazed at how... I mean, I was like yeah. 100 miles an hour for... Don't tell the out. kids that. Don't, I'm Sorry. safety That's first. not safe. <laughs> and, and also, this show, you know, even uh, I think some of the greatest days for Boone and me is when we actually do get to ride. And there's, there's never enough of those days. They are the greatest days on set when we actually get to ride. So I think uh, riding, period. I don't care if you're on a Harley or BMW or a Suzuki or a dirt bike. You're riding, and you are outside, and it is freedom, and please be safe, but there's nothing like riding, and I, I, we love it. We really do. Awesome. Guys, thank you so much for coming. Unfortunately, it's all the time we have. Please give it up one more thank time for you. our guests. Kim Coates, Grady Mateo, Mark Boone Jr., Sons of Anarchy. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks, bro. Thank you. It's awesome. Yeah.